Hello. This is a, a person that uh, shows up in the live stream all the time. She's a very sweet person. I'm not going to give her last name. Her name is Eva. She showed up with uh, her daughter. We went out to a restaurant. Um, she lives out in California. She's uh, a teacher, and uh, she's a very sweet person. She's sick of all the high taxes, the high crime, her car windows got busted out and they robbed her and um, as a teacher she told me endless stories that are just you know hair curling not that I have any hair um, she's out here actually looking for a place uh, to live uh, Oklahoma is a possibility but she's uh, looking all over Kentucky I guess we can go out to eat tomorrow very sweet lady um, there's a lot of things actually moving, uh, unless you have your head buried in a very, very dark place. Um, people that have two eyes and two brain cells at the very minimum see that they're going to have to start shifting a lot of stuff in their lives to safeguard their lives. I mean, that's the most fundamental right of any human being. It's the same thing that every animal does. You see uh, ants out on the prowl looking for sugar cubes and things to take back to their little uh, ant nest to uh, safeguard against uh, bad times and uh, the winter. And We have an artificial winter in humanity. I've thought a lot about this and I really, really also too, since I read every comment, I'm still making my way through the comments on the last video on the Black Swan event. I want to hear from you, and some of you uh, come up with some amazing ideas that I had not thought of. I spent a lot of uh, time and energy thinking about stuff like this, um, mostly about metaphysics and really abstruse things of field theory and understanding cosmic mechanics. And I uh, lead a really simple life of very deep thought. Whatever you think about me one way or another, I mean... It's not important. Uh, I've got a roof over my head. Um, I do the best that I can. I mean, I have no house payment, no car payment. I uh, try to think lo logically and rationally. And uh, I, as I've said many times, I got a gift for raw land. But anything that wasn't nailed down that had any value that I've been collecting, either intentionally or unintentionally, in my life, including all the extra lenses and various type of gear that I've had, I've, I've gotten rid of and I've put it into land and other things and spent a lot of uh, intellectual energy, unfortunately, you know, preparing for what's coming. Um, Eva, who I just met with, and we went out to the Texas Roadhouse and I had chicken fingers with uh, honey mustard dipping sauce and a bunch of fries. It was too much salt. I never eat out, but you know. I'm not a person that consumes a lot of salt, but that's okay. It was a wonderful meal. She's a sweetheart. Um, she's moving out here and making moves. Lexington itself, which is where I'm at right now, has seen a huge upswing in people that are fleeing um, various parts of the country that are absolutely horrible. Those horrible places would be like New York, New Jersey, all of California, Oregon, Washington State. Um, the land here is really cheap and I was just down in Naples at my uh, friend's house uh, staying there and she bought me some dental work. I had uh, five uh, um, cavities and you know she's uh, upset with and I could see it. I mean the traffic is absolutely horrific basically all during the day. I mean everybody is fleeing California and these other horrible bastions of uh, socialism, and that's exactly what they are, to live where things are calm, and people seek calm. I've noticed that there's been a, a lack of land availability in Kentucky, and the prices have gone up. Um, I have several farms and a cabin in the woods, and, you know, I'm, uh, I'm as prepared as I can be. I'd like to talk about portfolio diversification and asset diversification. I've read an enormous amount of articles, including the really complicated ones where, you know, people that actually have money, and I'm certainly not one, but we can all do our best 
to not have our eggs in one basket. Um, I know a few people that uh, run pawn shops, and you go looking there for super cheap used tools, at least I do. I mean, you get some amazing deals on some tool bits and whatnot that, uh, you know, like 90% off. And there's another very famous pawn shop. I don't want to mention his name. It's not the one in Las Vegas, by the way. And uh, they are the front lines of what's actually happening. And one of the reporters was asking him, it's like, well, the people are, uh, you know, coming in trying to make it to month to month. And he's like, lady, month to month, the people that are coming in and pawning stuff, you know, to buy groceries and whatnot are, you know, trying to make it week to week and day to day. And he said he's seen a massive uh, upswing in people pawning stuff. And the people that I've talked to confirm that. The credit cards are maxing out. People are getting desperate. Rent is going higher. I have over here. You can't see it. Um, insurance on my cabin went up uh, from $700 a year to, what is it, $1,200 some dollars? I, I'm just not going to have insurance. I, I can't afford that. A lot of you have reported to me how insurance prices have gone absolutely crazy. Um, I was at my friend's. I'm so tired, and I'm still tired. At my friend's, they're very wonderful people. I love them to, love them to death. They're very sweet. At their, uh, their farmhouse here in uh, southern Kentucky. And, uh, you know, they're getting a lot of stuff fixed up, and uh, they're prepared, and they're getting uh, five head of cattle. Uh, just now, uh, the person that's taking care of the farm that used to own it is getting chickens and ducks and turkeys and geese, and uh, they're going to get also, too, some pigs. And there's a bunch of giant pear trees that are on the farm um, that uh, the former owner was actually feeding to the pigs. And uh, actually, she cooked up some uh, big uh, pork steaks. I forget which cut of pork it was. The best pork. I, I never really buy or eat pork because it always tastes so awful and gamey. And, you know, this stuff is succulent and wonderful. This apparently is what happens when you feed uh, pigs pears, which, you know, I didn't know. And clean water. She actually said the secret is clean water. I want to hear from you. There is a coming a time here. By the way, Kentucky has the world's largest open-air flea market. It's called Kentucky Court Days, uh, which has become a bit too commercialized, but just outside of there. And it goes on for countless miles in many directions. Um, near there is a place called Preston. I go there every year. I try to take as much money as I can, and there's so many killer deals there, and there's Amish and Mennonites running around selling their stuff and their wares. Really, really useful things and tools that you just don't find anywhere else. And... I always spend every penny I have, and uh, last time, uh, last October, which is when it is, you could go look it up online. I had to borrow several hundred bucks from my buddy just to buy more stuff because there were just such killer, awesome uh, deals there. Um, it's going to get to the point where, you know, cash isn't going to make it happen. Nobody wants to work anymore. I like to put a sign behind me. Some coach talked about how bad it's getting. I've talked with you and countless other people. Nobody wants to do their job anymore. Now, some coach said he hung up a wooden sign that says, just do your job. That should be the motto for uh, Gen X and Gen Z and also, too, what's going on now. And I know why people are doing it. It's called quiet quitting, and you can't get anybody to do anything. Um, my friends at their farmhouse ordered a washer-dryer combo that I picked out for them. Really, really awesome. I think it was an LG. And uh, they paid for a delivery and installation, and these lazy people just showed up, and they wouldn't do it. And they, you know, said, well, we paid for it. And they tried to hook it up, and then water spilled, and they had to turn the water off, and they turned it on again. And it's just useless, useless people. And we're all going to have to have skills and books on being able to do it ourselves. I mean, I know how to connect PVC, and I've got, I'm actually hoarding, and I have hoarded, and it's in the basement, a bunch, a bunch, a bunch of thread for my sewing machines, and I've got about 100 rolls of leather, which really is not enough. These big rolls behind me, that's an $800 roll of leather, by the way. This uh, really thick harness leather for making belts and holsters. I'm really good at making holsters, and I make a lot of belts. Um, they're getting cows and chickens. Um, they actually have a freeze dryer, and 
I had to do, you know, I did some training on it, and we did some trial and error. And I mean, I know about freeze drying. I have a lot of freeze dried food. It's so lightweight; it stops decay. So if you got stuff on the shelf, there's some things you can't freeze dry, of course. Um, you know, it stops that decay, and you could have just an enormous amount of food that doesn't weigh anything. Of course, when you're done freeze drying it, it looks like you know, the stuff that you get out of your vacuum cleaner bag. It just looks like vacuum cleaner dust, but I mean, you rehydrate it with boiling water and, you know, it's perfect. And you've taken something that you would have had to throw out in 48 hours in your refrigerator, and now it's good for 30 years. You get to drop in an oxygen absorber and you get to stick it in a vacuum sealer pack. And I had to learn how to use that thing. And trial and error, a couple, three mistakes I made with a freeze dryer. They have a Harvest Right freeze dryer. I'd really, really love to get one because, you know, think of all the food that we throw away. Um, there's going to be a new class of money, and of course, I don't confuse money with assets. And I'm a person of limited means. A uh, surplus store had, this is uh, actually a cartridge brass, they call it. I, he had uh, 11 uh, rolls of uh, surplus wire. There's like 100 different things. There's more than that, actually in my life where I've needed thin wire like this to attach things, to string things together, to build things. I mean, stuff that is extremely useful like this. Is this money? Yeah, it, it actually is. You know, when the time comes when they want to stick us with CBDC and uh, have us working off a digital currency where everything is traceable. By the way, my best buddy who lives east here about 25 miles this whole motto for the past several decades to me is no paper trail and he's right no paper trail I'll let you figure out what it means when I say no paper trail which of course I'm taking that off of his motto um, I'd like to get a freeze dryer they're just too expensive when you got the freeze dryer you also too have to have the vacuum sealer um, food land uh, I don't care. I know about property taxes, and I know the countless thousands of people. Well, you never really own the land. You got paper drop property taxes on it. It's not really yours. I've heard that 10 million times. It's still my land. What you say is true, but it is still my land. It's not going to be seized by the government. I know all about eminent domain. You know, if it came to that, this country would absolutely collapse. They start taking people's land. This country would be overnight over. It would just be over. You, you try to take people's land, you know, uh, through some uh, surreptitious means or subterfuge or, you know, uh, political skullduggery or some sort of nefarious, you know, this country is over. It's over with overnight. It's over with before overnight, actually. I've put 80% of what I have into land. Uh, I have a lot of uh, seeds. My friends actually too are collecting heirloom seeds, which uh, I'm going to magnetize those using magnetic seed exposure so they grow better. Um, alcohol. I'm not a person that drinks, but alcohol has a million different uses. And it is a form of currency. My friends have done the same. They uh, have a lot of alcohol in storage. It's never going to go bad. You know, once you freeze dry food and it's good for 30 years, and it's so lightweight, all you have to do is rehydrate it. I mean, it takes away, depending on the food and the water content, it takes away 60 to 80% of the weight of the food of what it was formerly. And it's not decaying anymore if you do it right, of course. That is money. It's like, here, here's some foods, and they're going to last for 30 years. I, myself, am not going to last another 30 years. I may have another 10 or 15 years. I mean, I could drop dead tomorrow. I don't know. Nobody knows. Um, I was so impressed we were setting up, and I was studying on the freeze dryer at their farm and uh, moving stuff in. Solar panels. I have a lot of solar panels. I've shown you those here. That itself is a form of money. Um, lithium iron phosphate batteries, you know, they don't last forever, but I mean, that is a form of money. You give somebody a solar panel and the charge controller to go between the solar panel and the battery. And blackouts, I mean, I've got, how many have I got? I think I've got six uh, 200 and or 300 amp hour batteries in this house here. And I have more than enough solar panels. My entire hallway is lined with giant solar panels. 
I have portable 200 and 100 watt foldable solar panels. That is itself money. Water filtration. A lot of people are looking for a home here. My doctor now lives in Kentucky. Uh, my friend Eva that I met here, she's always in live stream. Well, usually always. Um, she, just, she just can't take the bills and the crime and all the garbage related to where she's living at in California. I'm not going to say where she lives at. She can't take it anymore. That's why she's here. Tomorrow she's going out looking for a place to make her own. People are looking for bastions of uh, normalcy. This world, and you really have to be blind and extremely unintelligent to not see it, has gone insane. They've gone insane. So you can say whatever it is in the water. You can say whatever it is in the food. You know, the crazy media that brainwashes them. People, normal people, want normalcy. You know, they want isolation and protection. I love to make videos about protection tools. I used to be a concealed carry instructor. I know an enormous amount about that topic, but you can't make videos about that here on the tube. You're just not allowed to. Freedom seeds and pew pews. I've, I have a certain percentage in uh, pew, pew, pew. <laughs> it's wise. I got some double odd buck and uh, some uh, number eight shot right over there behind you. And I've, you know, I've, in my cabin, I've got a, a pile of that. That is itself money. I tell people, and nobody talks about this, what's the one thing that never goes down? It does fluctuate a little bit. Never goes down, only goes up. It will feed you. It will protect you. It is itself and always has been a form of money. You know, it's made out of brass and uh, copper. And, uh, you know, it's powered by potassium nitrate, sulfur, and charcoal. I'll let you figure out what that is. I'd like to hear from you about diversification. I've spent an enormous amount of intellectual energy, and what little I have, you know, I have diversified. People think, well, I've got 10 grand sitting in my savings account, or 11, or I don't know, whatever you got. And I don't care if you got 500 grand in your savings account, or 5,000 in your savings, or even 500. Yeah, that digital currency and or the paper sitting in your safe or the paper sitting under your pillow, wherever the heck you put it, it's not going to get it done. I realize this. I do not in any way, shape, or form pretend to be at all any type of, you know, I got some black paint on my hands. Sorry about that. I was painting something financial consultant. I'm not pretending to do that in this video. What I'm saying is I've expended a lot of uh, mental energy on it, and I'd like to hear from you as well. I'm interested in being logical, rational, and sensible, and adjusting you know, to the winds that are blowing out there that are fake and propaganda-based and driven by Hydra and countless evil entities. You can't stick all your eggs in one basket. Well, I'm working as hard as I can, and you don't know, have any credit card debt, and I've got 30 grand in my savings account. Let's say the brakes, you know, come to a, a stop tomorrow in whatever level or, or magnitude, and it's coming. It's coming in multiple vectors. I mean, that is undeniable. Multiple vectors, it is coming. I would put every bit of uh, my word and every bit of uh, whatever you know, trust you have in me or that I also too have in myself to tell you that it is coming. You think these people that have serious money are building mega bunkers for like no reason? The tightest people I know are the richest people. The people that just blow money like tomorrow's, uh, tomorrow's the end of the world are the poor people, the tight people. These people are spending super, super serious money. One guy is building a mega bunker in Hawaii. You know who that is? I don't need to mention his name. He looks like a Data from Star Trek. He looks exactly like Data. The other guy is uh, 
carving out uh, uh, a mountain that he bought. Yeah, it's that's his bunker. It's since a carved out mountain. I'll let you figure out who that is. The sink is the ship is sinking, and the two richest people in the world, you know, have not been throwing endless billions into uh, rocketry and escaping. They know that they know the ship is sinking. They're trying as hard as they can and throwing as much money as they can into uh, rockets and space capsules because they are the super rich rats trying to escape the sinking ship. You really think that they're throwing countless billions into rocket science, you know, for the sake of humanity or some sort of no. I know a lot, and I can't talk about it, uh, I know an enormous amount, actually, about high-quality investment pew-pews. You know, it is an, I, a rock-hard investment, but say things collapse totally and you know, money is gone. Well, those super high-quality, you know, few handful that I have are, you know, save your life, protect your family, and I know very, very, very well, since I used to teach marksmanship, used to teach concealed carry classes, I used to have my own range, which I sold last year. I used to have a range for, pew, you know, practicing. If everything collapses, it's still an incredible investment. Can't talk about that stuff. Silver. I don't have much silver. You know, I'll let you speculate how much I do or don't have. But there's going to come a time soon where cash in whatever form is not going to cut it. Heirloom seeds, silver, old tra You know what has really skyrocketed? You know, it always hindsight's 2020. I'd love to go back about 15 years and buy three or four working, beat up, you know, need some paint. Uh, you know, 25-year-old trucks, you know, the, or 30 or 40, the ones that had basically no, basically no electronics in them. You opened up the hood and any blind fool could fix them. Do you know how much those things are going for now? Like a 60s Ford truck or 70 or 75, you know, they're really, really similar. There's an engine and a tranny in it and a steering wheel and like not much else. A little AM, FM radio. Do you know how much those things are going for now? People are clamoring like it's the end, because it is. Clamoring like it's the end to buy those things. They're going for crazy money. I mean, crazy, crazy money. Go on Craigslist and see what a beat up old, uh, but working, 1960s, 1965 GMC Ford pickup truck goes for. Just, just take a look. I'd like to hear from you. I've put all I've put my money where my mouth is at. I I, I have a, a substantial cache of seeds, including sprouting seeds. Nothing better than a bunch of mung beans and alfalfa sprout seeds, but also two heirloom seeds for uh, planting. Tools, power tools, and the uh, the lithium to recharge those tools, and the solar to feed the batteries. You know, I've got a perfect closed loop of solar charge controllers batteries, lithium batteries, and the power tools to build and cut and do any freaking thing, essentially. I love to walt, by the way. Um, I love to get a freeze dryer. Um, I've known about the benefits of freeze drying, but, you know, there's several parameters I didn't think of until I was sitting there staring at that freeze dryer for the past five days, basically, learning about it, studying on it, watching training videos, on and on and on and on. It's got five racks. It's a medium-sized uh, Harvestrite freeze dryer. A lot, a lot, a lot of benefits. Um, the fact that you're saving the food rather than throwing it away. If you do it consistently, um, you know, the thing pays for itself, would definitely pay for itself in a short period of time. Wonderful device. Man, when the food, I mean, it's so lightweight. I'm sorry, I'm, I'm preaching about freeze dryers. I mean, just very, very impressive. Um, anyway, I have a buddy that sells cattle. I'm going to call him uh, tomorrow. 
Um, but the person that's taking care of their farm is getting cattle and chickens and ducks and turkeys and geese. And, uh, you know, all of these things are future money. And I wish that weren't the case and things aren't collapsing, but they're forcing a collapse. You know it and I know it. So I'd love to hear from you about portfolio diversification. I don't have any money at all to work with now because the IRS totally robbed me. And when I say they robbed me, they robbed me. Um, but at least it's paid for. I honestly, as a closing note, I've heard from an enormous amount of people and there's a huge stream of this information on social media. People are like, I can barely afford to feed myself and or my family and I'm struggling to pay for groceries. I'm not saying anybody should do this because the IRS will come after you. They'll put a lien on your house. They'll put a, you know, a lien on your bank account. These people are like, you know, come, come and get me. Come and get me. What are you going to do? I've got nothing. I'm barely, I'm starving as it is. I'm not sending you money so you could waste it on A, B, C, X, Y, Z. They're talking about this all over the place. And I don't know what the, uh, the move and the counter move is going to be from this, from the government, because apparently I've seen in a mountain of evidence that a lot of people are just giving this finger to the GOV. It's like, you know, can't get blood out of a turnip. You know, come and get it. I'm not giving you the money that I need to buy groceries, which I basically can't afford because they're so freaking expensive. So is rent. So is insurance. You know, my cabin insurance here. It's it's going up from 720, I think, to it's nearly doubled. Not exactly double, but it went up a lot. I can't afford that. Can't afford it. I don't have any medical insurance as it is now. I'm just like, I'm going to keep the insurance on this house, but I can't afford to keep the insurance on the cabin. I'm just going to have to self-insure. I'd like to hear from you on what you're planning to do. I love hearing brilliant ideas on diversification and things that you're doing. Whatever you do, I beg you to get some solar panels and I beg you to get some water filtration. Nobody thinks about it. Nobody talks about it. Save your life. It'll feed you. Everybody talks about food and protection. and they, well, It's all fine. It's all great. Nobody ever talks about water filtration. You need to have water filtration. So tell me what you think. Have a lovely week. It's really late. I'm still really exhausted if I seem out of it. It's true because I'm really tired. <laughs> Nevertheless, thank you so much. If you want to contact me, my information is in the description below. Have a lovely day. Any donation is always warmly welcome. I have over 8,000 videos. I'm uh, you know, trying to be a straightforward person as much as I possibly can. And I am a straightforward person. You know, I'm not going to take any of this garbage with me when I go. You know, I've got no reasons. I have no nefarious plans on anyone or anything. I'd love to hear from you. Have a lovely week.